You know, I was sitting here uh, as I was planning my day out. It's early in the morning here. And one of the things I've been thinking about as I've been working on this blog and defining expository preaching, just been thinking about how important understanding a definition of preaching, especially expository preaching, actually is. Because knowing that definition is what's going to be a foundational motivation for everything that we do. Uh, it, you know, if we know what what it's called and why we're doing it, and in my case, you know, the oral proclamation of a properly interpreted passage of scripture, uh, so forth, you know, that the understanding those foundational elements are going to make a big deal uh, in our life because it's going to motivate us to, to make sure that we do that. And when I think about this aspect of a call of God, you know, I go back to when I was in seminary, First uh, Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 1, uh, that passage of scripture was explained to me in very explicit detail by uh, my seminary professor at that time, my preaching professor at that time, the, the man that I was working for as, as a grader in his class, Dr. Jim Shaddix. And I remember him just stressing that it, that it says that if, it, if any man aspires or desires the office of overseer, it's, an, it's a good work that he desires to do. And he explained that word aspires or desires, and he, he began to tell us that it's not something that we just have in our, in our mind, that we just wake up one day and say, you know, I think I'd like to be a pastor or a preacher. But something starts stirring on the inside of us. And he explained that that word aspires or desires carries with it the idea that something has been put inside you from an outside source. And that outside source, of course, in our case is God. And so the prompting to be a preacher, the prompting to learn to do expository preaching, and the prompting to go full-time into ministry, that's something we fully believe comes from God. It's something that we fully believe that God is doing in us. So therefore, when we think about a definition, it's not just something that we know intellectually, but it's something that is a part of us. And again, it motivates us to do that thing uh, with the best of our abilities, to, to, to do that thing that we call expositional preaching uh, to the best of our ability, abilities because we are doing it for the glory of God. And, and so there's two things that I talk about in this, this article. The idea that the call of God or that prompting from God is, is un, or it's unbelievably overwhelming is, is what I'm trying to say. It's just something that stays inside you. It's not something you can run from. I hear a lot of preachers tell their story about how they ran from it. Well, they must not have been able to run very long uh, because they got caught. I never wanted to run from the call of God. I just wanted to make sure that I did indeed have the call of God on my life. I didn't want to just make that assumption. So again, it's overwhelming in the sense that it just is always there. It's always at the forefront of your thinking. It's right there in your mind all of the time. And and you want to do it, but because you want to do it, you want to make sure that you're ready and that you do it to the very best of your abilities. You want to go and get the training necessary and come to websites like this, you know, and, and just devour the information. And then secondly, not only is it overwhelming, but, but it's something that's verified uh, not only by yourself, but the people around you. I mean, you know it yourself. You feel that strong call inside yourself. But the people around you in your church and your family will begin to sense it. They'll begin to know it as well. You know, it's a, it's confirmed by the members of your church. We see that in the book of Acts where Paul and Barnabas ministry was confirmed by the church. And this is something that we obviously do in the, in the process of ordination. This is where the church has seen us and watched us develop in our desire and our faithfulness, and they just see that we are one that is truly called out uh, to be a minister of the gospel. So I, I just wanted to shoot this short video and, and just share that, that this, this idea that, that the calling is a very important thing. It's something that we need to recognize as we think about a definition of preaching and the fact that we're, our definition includes in it the idea that ex expositional preaching can only be done by someone who's called of God, who's got that inward prompting that we talk about and that Dr. Shaddix explained to me so many years ago in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, that really revolutionized 
uh, my thinking in so many ways. I knew then that, that what I was doing was not something that I came up with on my own and my own intellectual ability, but it was something that God had planted there. So it helps me as I formulated that idea of a definition of preaching, and I trust it'll help you, that God has put the prompting in you to be a minister. We're motivated to live on top of that call, uh, in, in line with that call, and put that call into action and, and study and, and preach to the very best of our abilities for the glory of God. And, and secondly, understanding that it is very overwhelming and, but it's also confirmed by the church. So since we've confirmed it in our, in our own heart and we, it's been confirmed by members of our church, then we can go out and we can do it very well. That's the question. Do you know without question that you're called to do this? Because I can promise you that if you don't feel as though you're called, you're gonna have a lot of trouble doing this. Hopefully you're here because you have that assurance and this website, the things that are here are helpful to you. If I can help you in any way, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Uh, take advantage of the coaching. Man, the coaching ministry is growing. My schedule is getting full, but I would love to help you. I'll find a way to work you in if I can If I can help you in any way. I'll do it. I'll, I'd be honored to work with you. This is Tony Guthrie. All the best.